Welcome into the show, everyone. The very first episode of the Holt Naylor Show. We'd like to say thank you to our sponsors, Anson Belts and Worth Chiropractic. We couldn't do it without you. We hope you enjoy this show. But if not, as always. Holt Naylor turns, and Holt will take off and run himself. He's at the 40 yard line. Holt Naylor to the 30. Look at him go. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Pirates. There's local politics, bud. It's showtime! And we are here. Boys, it's been a while. You're about to meet the walk-ons, Caden, Jack, and Drew. Uh, A lot of time, effort, money has been put into this. We've had this idea for really a while now. I've wanted to do, even when I was playing, um, I knew that there was going to be a time when it was time to to do this. I've always wanted to. I've aspired to do it. And uh, Jack and Caden, we kind of talked about it when we were playing. Um... You know, I've always been behind a podium, really. I've never been able – I've always been truthful with you, but I've never been able to give you my full, I guess, thoughts on things. And uh, this is the time to do it. Hey, this is the people show. Um, you know, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. We're going to let you guys call into the show. Tag us on X at Holt Ayler Show if you would like to come on to the show. Uh, if you have any segment ideas, any guest ideas, tag us on there, um, and we will make it happen to the best of our ability. Because, like I said, uh, this is you guys' show. We want – it to be as interactive as possible. We're going to have a lot of fun, cool segments, a um, bunch of cool live guests too, not just fans, but a lot of big name people. Already next week, uh, HV3 is going to come on. Harold Varner is going to come on next week. So make sure you have our alerts on. Um, we are going to show, we'll promote it on our Twitter as well, or on our X, excuse me, as well as Pirate Radio. We've teamed up with Pirate Radio to make this happen. Um, you can see us on YouTube at Pirate Radio TV, then click playlist and we'll have our own section there. And what, and you can also look us up on any of the podcast networks. Just look up the Holt Naylor show and we should pop up right away. So let's get to it. Um, this show is going to be fun. Like I said, and, uh, it's going to be fun because we have cool, the things I just talked about, but we also got, I also got my best friends with me. Um, it's going to be a fun time and, uh, let's dive right into it. They are known as the walk-ons. You're about to know why here in a second, all three former walk-ons. Uh, let's start with Caden Norman. Caden, what's up, brother? What's up, man? Happy to be here. We've been talking about this for a while. Yeah, let's go. So a little bit about Caden, uh, played quarterback at ECU. Um, he was a year older than I was. I came in and he kind of showed me the ropes, I would say, um, a little bit. And, uh, I, I want to say mentored a little bit. He's he doesn't like when I say that, but he did. He did. You know, he showed me hard work. He showed me what it meant to be a pirate. I already knew that. And, you know, I already kind of knew what it meant, but he showed me what hard work does. I mean, he was paying his way, doing it the whole time as, you know, what walk-ons do is literally pay to play football there. Um, and he was working as hard as anyone. So I looked up to him a lot. He helped me a lot along the way. And uh, from Clayton, North Carolina, uh, played at Cleveland. Cleveland High School. Cleveland High there School. Broke a lot of high school state records. So. <laughs> Believe it or not, the, like if you look at the top 10 of North Carolina passing records, it's literally me and him and like Will Greer. and Some maybe, big names up yeah, there. Yeah, Caden Norman's uh, one of the bigger names, though, if you look <laughs> it up. But other than that, um, I was looking up. I was thinking of what to kind of describe you as and like that. And I got Drew. We were reading your bio. And Drew, our producer, which you're also about to meet, I'm going to let him read your ECU bio going in, I think, to one of your, your junior or senior year. Drew, read it. Probably the senior year, yeah. Yes, sir. Caden Norman. A popular reserve quarterback who has unselfishly delivered three productive years as one of the program's top scout team performers, in addition to a reliable role role as the Pirates' animated offensive game day sideline signal distributor and experienced action on special teams as a possible holder on place kicking tries. What a right. guy. There we go. So, yeah, he, uh, yeah, a lot of people, um, you kind of became famous for the – the signal for signal yeah. the plays, you know, he was very animated with it. I mean, that's in his bio at ECU football. Like that's not something, that's not a tweet. You know, that's uh people knew you as that. And you had literally had interviews. I remember you had interviews of doing that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you found your role and kind of talk about that. Talk about, you know, your journey to ECU. What made you choose ECU? The walk on life is a hard one. Kind of get into that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate, you know, that, that great introduction. I wasn't <laughs> expecting all that, the whole nine yards there, but, uh, yeah, came on to ECU as a walk-on, um, you know, had a pretty good high school career, like you said, but just wasn't recruited heavy. I was an average quarterback size, six foot one, tiny hands, if you can see on camera. Tiny hands. Um, outside of tiny hands, I didn't have any, I just had average speed, so 
pretty overlooked, but I still wanted to play big time football. I didn't want to go small schools. I wanted to experience it. My cousins played college football at Ohio University, so I knew what Division One was like as a fan. So I wanted to experience it as a per, uh, player as well. Uh, so got here, realized that college football at the Division One level is next next level. It's literally hard. Uh, <laughs> I was tiny compared to a bunch of people, so. Uh, you know, I had to figure out my role, uh, like you said, and mentorship to you is kind of funny. I literally was <laughs> here six months before you were, but uh, I appreciate that. But, uh, you know, I was, how did I find my role here? You know, I realized I wasn't going to play a lot. I realized I thought I was good and I always had that mentality. Like, I think I can play, but truthfully, like, you know, deep down, like I didn't have the, that, the, you know, the God given talent. So I was like, how can I be a, a factor at ECU? So I think it was my red shirt freshman year, you know, I would realize like, Hey, how can I do it? Working hard on scout team was one. Um, lo- that's where I think I earned a lot of respect from our oh, teammates yeah. was the scout team life. And then uh, two was just learning the playbook. I realized if we could learn the playbooks playing under two staff, Scotty Montgomery and coach Houston, um, and realizing learning the signals, which like you mentioned, I got kind of, you know, celebrity f- status around here <laughs> with, uh, I could have a role in this team, and that's what I did. I went home. I remember uh, that red shirt freshman like Christmas break time, kind of before you came in. Yep. And I literally took the playbook on that Christmas break, and I studied everything. I just kept studying it, studying it. Remember the signs, and I came back, and I think we showed, uh, you know, Coach Peterson, the offense coordinator, then like, hey, Caden knows his playbook. He probably knows it better than anyone else. And I was just, we came up with the signals. We came with the Fortnite dances. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, kind of got a little celebrity status with it. A couple of, like older ladies liked it, older <laughs> women. So that was the best part about it. But I uh, loved my time at ECU, like Holton said, from Clayton, North Carolina. Um, really didn't know much about ECU before, even though I grew up only an hour and a half down the road. Um, but, you know, ECU changed my life. Love the program now. And uh, can't think of any other college football program outside of uh, East Carolina now. Yeah. I mean, I think you hit it all right there. I remember uh, you were talking about learning the signals. I remember – you learning the signals and us being best friends kind of helped me because you would know the signals. And we, I remember we were going in uh what's the dorm at the top of the hill gateway gateway. I don't yeah. think it's called that now, but we would go into the study like suite and gateway and you would, I'd be like, look, signal me the plays and then I'm gonna have to draw it on the board and explain it and do all that. So we were kind of both yeah. learning, kind of, you know, both grooming. And that was before I ever even played here. That was like spring of my freshman year. Um, the so, best part about that was that's, that your freshman year before you came in that 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 winter as i went home and studied that playbook and coach mo and coach peterson ripped that entire playbook oh, remember, out yeah. and i was like no way i just spent my <laughs> entire christmas break studying this but what's awesome about it was you know i earned the respect off of them they realized this kid studied and they let me holton and a few other quarterbacks actually come up with the signals that, that year yeah so if you remember any of the Fortnite dances the conor mcgregor stuff that was all internal or like how can guys remember the playbooks because it's tough to remember the plays especially when you're coming in and we came up with stuff that you know that was funny from the from the fans but yeah. stuff that you know people you know our players would remember pretty easily yeah good well that's one third of the walk-ons Cade norman uh former ecu quarterback and um yeah all right let's get to the next one to his left another former ecu player we all are all former ecu players now former outside linebacker former defensive end you play a little dn too yeah um Transfer so from Cali, uh, walked on at Nevada, another walk on obviously, and then earned a scholarship there. Had a really good career there. Decides to you know find something more with the with the program. Enters the portal, really quick turnaround, which he'll get to. Decides to come to ECU and has kind of lit it up since and and loved this place. And um, you can kind of explain that a little bit, but that's Jack Powers and uh, also host of the very popular Power Hour um, that ECU football ran. Last summer was it last summer? Yeah, it was during fall camp. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, Jarrett came up to me and was just kind of like, "Hey, we kind of got this little idea for people to get to know the team." And uh, so every day during lunch after practice, we'd go around the, the kind of like cafeteria up there, yeah, um, near winners' dinner, and just go around and interview people and play fun games with them. And yeah, it turned out to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so I, that was very popular. I know a lot of people. That was one of the most popular things that ECU football did on social media. So Jack, um, kind of tell us about yourself. You know where you were from. I mean, I kind of already hit on it a little bit, but getting more detail about you know what led you really to this point. So kind of go through high school, your recruitment, why you decided to walk on, if you had other offers to play at a smaller school, kind of getting all that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just outside of Sacramento in Northern California is where I'm from. It's called Granite Bay, California. 
um, really was pretty under recruited out of high school. Um, you know, I had good numbers and stuff, but I was just average in the sense that I was six two. I was probably about 200 pounds. I wasn't fast enough. I didn't really have the twitch. Um, so out of high school, I only had one walk on offer. I had a couple D2 offers, but I always knew kind of like Caden, like I wanted something bigger and I knew I could go get it. And so Jay Norvell, who's now at Colorado State, he was the head coach at Nevada and uh, he gave me a walk on opportunity there. And once I got there, like after the first couple months, like I remember talking to my dad being like, I could do this. Like I'm maybe not right now, but like I'm going to put in the work and I can do this. And so just kind of found my role there uh, through special teams and like slowly got on the field, slowly started getting respect from my teammates. And then by, I think the end of my second year, going to my third year, um, I was on all the special teams and I was starting to travel and be a part of the defense on the depth chart, stuff like that, getting in the game. Um, graduated early from there after being put on scholarship and had two years of eligibility left over and then went in the portal, which is obviously now a big focal point in college football. Um, and we could talk about that more yep. later, but quick turnaround, uh, took a risk, came all the way across the country and I've loved every minute of it. I mean, the people, the community, um, the fans, the culture, the environment, the coaches I played for, I've, I've loved it all. So just grateful to be here. Um, appreciate of you with all the time and effort you've put into this Dude, and uh, yeah. looking forward to it. Jake, you know, I think um, saying that story right there is I think is like you had to, a piece of your heart had to be at Nevada's because like you go, you walk on there, you earn your, you, I mean, you just talked about how you earn your way, you earn your scholarship, you're paying for your school, you get told that you're going to, you know, get free school now right. uh, per se. And then you entered the portal that had to have been, a, um, <clears throat> you know, a, a hard thing to do. Cause I mean, let's be honest, like you earn a scholarship somewhere. doesn't mean you're going to get a scholarship somewhere else. And like, you knew, you obviously knew you were capable of it and maybe, um, you know, had coaches in different positions, but, um, what was that conversation like with your family and you know, how, how'd you get to that? Well, I should have mentioned this, um, earlier, but my coaching staff that I played for for four seasons actually left and went to Colorado State. And so not only did I graduate that December after my fourth season, my coaching staff also left. Okay. And so people were going to the league. Um, probably think four people from my class now from Nevada are on an active roster, maybe three, which is pretty impressive. Um, people were going to the league. A lot of people were transferring. And I remember just kind of talking to my dad about it and being like, you know, why not? Like, I've, I've earned this. I've got this opportunity, and I know I could go get more. Like, why not go explore something new, get my master somewhere, um, and I have two years left to play. So, like, I think coaches would, would like that. Did you ever think about following your coach, or was that ever an option? Or what made you come across the country? I mean, have so, you you never even been to North Carolina, I think, until your visit, until right, we met you on your visit. Right. So. Um, so, honestly, I, I really did think about following my coach. I have a great uh, relationship with that staff. But at the end of the day, something was just kind of pulling on me and telling me, like, go explore something new, like, go meet new people, go step out of your comfort zone, honestly. Um, and so, yeah, I'd never been to North Carolina. And I remember the turnaround was so quick. Coach Doust, who was my position coach, he was like, do you even, like, want to take a visit here? It's only going to be 24 hours. Yeah. Like, I could just FaceTime you, the facility on the campus. <laughs> and I'm like, sorry, coach, like, never even been over there. So I think I want to come check it out. So had a 24 hour visit, flew back, uh, committed the next day, packed up my bags and flew back here for the first day of school the day after that. I remember cause I met you on the visit. Um, right. and I remember you saying like, yeah, I'm leaving next morning. I'm like, dude. And then you text me like two days later and was like, I'm committing, I'm coming. Uh, I was like, when are you coming? Uh, two days and I'm on the way. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll see you in class on Monday. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess what happened in that 24 hours, what did you see that brought you here? I mean, obviously 24 hours is a quick turnaround to decide, whether you want to move everything away from your family and all that, you know, what helped you move? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, just the coaching staff was so welcoming. They really emphasized the the culture, um, the environment here, the fans, the fans were a huge part of it. You know, like they, even this last year, we're, we'll talk about later, but two and 10, the fans are still showing out. Yeah. And so that was, they couldn't lie about that. Um, but just like, I really felt like this was a big time, college small town and like we pulled up and i saw the stadium and like nevada's facilities have gotten a lot nicer and stuff but their stadium did not look like that and i remember pulling up and seeing <laughs> that and i'm like that's what i want to play in right there and then i go to dinner i meet coach douse i meet coach harrell i meet coach houston and they were just great guys that also seemed like they cared more about me than just a football player 
they were gonna they were committed to helping me get my master's and now i'm in my last semester of that so that's paying off um and then thirdly he's sitting in here but tegan wilk who ended up being my roommate for two years he introduced me to guys like you um a couple guys other on that visit and it was just like it was a good group of guys where i felt like i could fit in um i felt like i could have friends and teammates and we all wanted to achieve the same thing go out and get a ring which we did and so it was just overall it was a great visit and yeah I, I remember flying back being like you know what like why not yeah exactly few few nasty Fortnite players in the room too <laughs> <laughs> for I, sure i gotta ask you what's your favorite thing uh, about north carolina that you got here and you don't have in california that Let's you go eastern north carolina e- you can do eastern north carolina as well i think it's just personally like southern hospitality like you people don't know that that's real like you hear about it and stuff like that but like southern hospitality like was at your house for thanksgiving the first yeah. year i was here and it's just like your whole felt family welcomed me in like i was one of you guys it's like stuff like that's just so cool and then you kind of take it for granted i was just back in california over winter break and like hold the door open for someone and they just walk right by you. <laughs> I was in California. Too. <laughs> I was in California for Christmas as well. I'm in there holding doors for people. And then as soon as I get my food at in and out someone just drops the door on me. I was like, Southern Hosp- hospitality is real. No, it real. is. I was, uh, I was in Seattle, so I can, yeah. Southern <laughs> hospitality is real. I did yeah. not get any of that so there. That's, that's probably my favorite part for sure. Last yeah. thing, did Jay Norval wear the uh, the Norval. blue collar? Norval, whatever. Yeah, did he wear every the? Every Tuesday, that work shirt. Blue the work, work shirt. Yeah. Nevada grit was our thing right there. And we were gritty. We did not have an indoor practice facility. It'd be snowing, 10 degrees. We're getting ready to go to the Idaho Potato Bowl. And we're <laughs> inside run, 22 periods. Jack came to ECU because he realized we didn't have an indoor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was looking for some more. We need grit. to get one of those. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's Jack Powers, Caden Norman, uh, two-thirds of the walk-ons. And then – so we kind of envisioned this for a while. Um, and I think that, you know, we talked – we needed someone to produce the show because none of us knew how to. We kind we envisioned this right here, but we wanted someone kind of behind the scenes but still in the show. Not um, tech guys. Yeah, we're not tech guys at all. Um, we taught ourselves how to do all this, so bear with us. There might be technical difficulties because we literally did all of this. Like We taught all of this ourselves. Um, but we needed someone to produce, and we needed someone that um, – we thought we needed someone with experience. We interviewed a couple guys with experience, and we ended up going with someone with zero experience. <laughs> um, tech guy, it, though. Tech guy, yeah. Tech so guy. how this happened, Drew Dotter – um, is going to produce our show, and he's going to be a huge part of it. Um, so bear with him any difficulties, too. He's learning this just as all of us are. You know, We've never hosted a show. He's never produced a show. Um, but he was always one of our closest friends. And we were talking about this, and we, we talked about to a couple producers, and we were like, we just don't know if that fits what we're aiming for. And Jack was like, dude, I think I think Drew's like a, a computer science major or something. And uh, MIS. Am I <laughs> close enough? And me and Jack, we were like, what does that even stand for? And Jack was like, someone with computers. Let's, let's talk to him. It, it really came to me because like he would always just, we're roommates and I'm sure he was going to say that later, but he'd always just drop like a subtle like fact or like some like just quirky fact about yeah. a game or a player, like a sports player. And I'm like, how, like, how do you even know that? And I'm like, that's what people want to hear. And then yeah. he has a background a little bit. So yeah. So Drew Dotter, um, Drew was a, also a former walk-on at East Carolina from Havelock, um, played probably the best scout team defensive player I played at East Carolina. I mean, he flew all over, definitely picked me off during scout team more than any other player. Caden can, can attest to that. Um, probably Donna Kirkpatrick probably got upset one or two <laughs> times at Drew for picking me off too many times, but uh, definitely made me better and um, eventually moved to DB. Um, extremely fast, extremely versatile. I tried to get him to move a receiver one time when Sneed left. I met with the coach and I was like, look guys, cause we have a period where the scout team would come over and play receiver and he was killing it one day. And I, I went up to the coach. And I was like, look, Drew's not playing on defense right now. Let's just try him at slot receiver. We're losing Snead. It was during spring practice. And, uh, but he ended up staying at defense. One of the best defensive uh, scout team players I've ever had. Big special teams guy paid his way as a walk on earned everything he got now currently in the transfer portal. So he graduated from ECU so he's got his degree, paid his way to be here. So we're in full support of him being in the portal. But uh, w- he's going to give you us stories of literally the portal. You know, fans, it's like this like mystery thing right now. Drew's going to give you stories. You're going to have stories. But Drew is currently wandering around the transfer portal right now, trying to find a home and, and definitely has opportunities to do that. But um, Drew, welcome to the show. Kind of explain yourself and what you're going to bring. Thank you. Uh, 
I'm a 252 native, just like Holton uh, from Havelock, North Carolina, as you already spoke about. Um, I feel like my journey was kind of similar to other walk-ons. Like you might have opportunities to play at maybe smaller schools because I was a smaller guy. I mean, I still kind of am. But, uh, you know, like you want to play in the big leagues and like you want to taste that. And I don't regret it because uh, I met great people. I met probably some of the best friends I will at, at, at ever have. And I don't regret it one bit. And I'm happy I chose ECU. And that's what it is. Yeah, I think um, he fits the mold perfectly. Jack kind of said it's like we wanted a producer that was like good with numbers. That was our thing. It was like we want a numbers guy. We want someone who's smart, who will say something. You'll be like, dude, how'd you know that? Literally kind of like yeah. you said a second ago. And we've done a couple practice episodes, and Drew like hit that like perfectly. Um, so I'm excited about that. He's learning the producing side. Um, so just bear with us with the video and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, but- definitely bear with me on that. <laughs> um, if you are just listening, try to te- go to YouTube TV or YouTube, excuse me, look up Pirate Radio TV, go to Playlist, check us out. We'll have our own thing. Give us a, we have, a, we spent a lot of money on this studio to make it look cool with a lot of cool memorabilia of ECU and other stuff. So uh, check it out on there. But Drew, um, kind of what, you know, what was your recruiting process like? Were you a late bloomer? I mean, obviously, you know, you're a skinnier guy. You, you gain weight once you got to ECU, you know, was there ever a thought of maybe go to a smaller school, transfer up, or, you know, what led you fully to choose ECU in your, uh, in your recruiting process? Well, I didn't really think about the transfer portal at that time because I feel like it it was a thing, but it wasn't what it is now. So, like, my thought process was the school that I go to is a school that I'm, I'm going to graduate at. And I knew um, ECU had a good MIS program. Like, at the time, it was like a 95% job rate com- coming out of there. So, I knew, like, I mean, even if football doesn't work out, like, I'll get a great degree and be successful in that field. And, uh like, it was close to home. I still see my mom and dad a lot, which is a plus. And uh, it just how it came, came about. I had a few FCS offers, but um, this is just what I chose, and I really don't re- regret it at all. Heck yeah, man. I think you're from, like, the North Carol- one of the North Carolina powerhouse programs in high school, and that's Havelock. Um, and uh, they breed recruits out there, it seems like, in um, – Obviously, ECU's had a lot of great players come from Havelock to ECU and have really good careers, and we've even played with some um, throughout our careers. Like, what does Havelock High School, you know, what do what does ECU need to do to create that pipeline of get every single, not maybe not every single player, but 80% of those recruits that are at Havelock? How do we get those guys to ECU? You know, what does what is the vibe of ECU football in a Havelock locker room? Because that is a question that probably fans want to know is, you know, you guys are going to have tons of recruits every year. How can we get those guys here? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing is, like, stress them to come to, to the games because I feel like that's ECU's true selling point is seeing that atmosphere compared to other AAC schools because uh, I've talked about it before. 2-10, um, and, and, and in the AAC, ECU is still second in the conference in attendance rate. So I think just getting them to see – the type of fans that ECU has and the type of crowd that you're going to play for every Saturday, like that's what wanted me to come here. Cause I just knew that the fans were all about ECU and it's a football school. So, I mean, I think that's the selling point that we got to get to hundred percent. Like, I think that's huge. all kids really. Yeah. I think that's huge. And Caden, you know a little bit about North Carolina. I mean, Havelock's very well, per- I mean, they get to say championship seems like every year. Yeah. They always have recruits. Havelock's a very respected program in North Carolina. So when you hear a recruit coming from Havelock, you know, they know good football. They're coached very well and they're just talented guys overall. Yeah, for sure. So that's kind of the walk-ons. You'll just get to learn them um, throughout the show and, you know, we'll get into more stories and stuff like that throughout, but um, let's get into it. So, we're going to talk ECU football, so if you remember, recap that. I haven't really been vocal about that you know, too much. Um, I have, I certainly have a lot of thoughts on it. They do too. Jack and Drew obviously were on the team. Caden was not. Me and Caden watched. Um, but you know, going 2-10, and 10, like you said, averaging 17.5 points a game. Donnie Kirkpatrick fired our former coach, um, which we'll get into here in a second. Got a lot of new additions coming in, but um, you know, the season itself, um, it was disappointing, honestly. I 100%, you know, I'm just going to be straight honest with you, is you know, you – you find we finally got the program back. You know, the goal coming in was maybe to win a conference championship, at least it was for me. But one of the bigger goals was to get to a bowl game and win a bowl game. And we did that. Um, we certainly could have won a conference championship my senior year. Some things just didn't fall the way we uh, would have wanted them to. You know, we could have played a lot better. I could have played a lot better. Um, but, you know, when you're at the not the mountaintop, but when you're high, you know, Coach Houston used to 
used to always say it's hard to get to the top, but it's harder to stay there. And I think us falling down this this past year is literally that that it is that quote hundred percent. And um, I mean, I think it was it was tough to watch. Just I mean, fans, you know that. I mean, I went to a few games once I got cut from Seattle, but you know, at the same time, I think um. You know, we're a two and ten football team. We're not a two and ten program, and there's a difference between that. Because no if you're a two and ten program, then you got to rebuild it. You got to start, and that's a three four year investment to get back to winning. Two and ten football team, I think you can win next year, especially in this conference. Look, Tulane, the big dogs. Tulane did it. Yes, Tulane yeah. literally did it. Um, and the big dogs left a couple years ago. So now there needs to be a new one. And Tulane just lost their head coach, just lost their quarterback, is still there for ECU to take. We were hoping that ECU would take over the conference this year. They didn't, but it's still there for the taking. No one dominated it this year. The winner of it, SMU's out. So they're still waiting for a top dog. Oh, and I think, you know, you said in the beginning of the show, and I think everyone wants to hear, you've been behind the podium for a while. You've kind of had to give the political talking points where did it go wrong this year for ECU? Where did you see it? I think, you know, everyone, you know, Pirate Nation's dying to know. Yeah, I mean, Your I thoughts, think, at least. Well, first of all, I'm never going to come, even if I talk negatively, I'm not going to talk negatively. I'm not coming at a person. I'm coming at the way they play or the way they coach. Like, these people that I'm going to talk about, I'm talking about Mason and Flynn and obviously Donnie and the offense, but, like, that was the problem. And, look, I love all three of those guys more than anything in the world, and you know that. You all know that. Mm-hmm. Um, I talk to them every day. And I will defend them every day. They weren't put in the best position to be successful, but they were put in the position, and they weren't successful. So there was times when I wasn't put in the best p- position, but I w- and I wasn't successful. But it still falls on you at the end of the day. It's going to fall on you as a, if you're the quarterback. It's going to fall on you. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. But that's just how it is. Because when you win, JJ McCarthy just went ten for eighteen with zero touchdowns, <laughs> zero interceptions, won a national championship, and he's going to go down as a legend. Like, that's just how it is. Best quarterback in Michigan, Harbaugh said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it starts – I think we – I know we had an opportunity to get a quarterback out of the portal last year. Um, we ended up playing him and losing to him last year out of our conference. He went. He transferred to a school in our conference and beat us. I do know that for a fact. Um, and, you know, we put all our eggs in – hate to say it, but Mason's basket it just didn't work out. Now, look, I love Mason, and he'll come on the show. He's one of my best friends. I'll talk to him. A couple times a week, um, and he. I hope he goes and balls out at Austin P. Yeah. But something wasn't there. You know, he wasn't developed for some reason. We were both in the room with him. Some point he wasn't developed, and you, you, everyone can put it on Donnie Kirkpatrick. I love Coach K. We were in the room with him. I, I was nineteen years. I was eighteen years old when Donnie became my coach, and I ended up breaking a lot of records and. Um, getting a chance at the NFL, getting a bowl, getting the two bowl games. So like he developed me just fine. So like he knows how to develop quarterbacks. You look at the previous two that he had: Ben DiNucci, NFL quarterback, one of the best in JMU history; Brian Shore, one of the best FCS quarterbacks ever. So it's like he knows how to develop quarterbacks. But at some point, there was a mishap, and he didn't develop Mason the best. Now, hopefully, like we said, Mason go gets developed at Austin P and has a great career because he's the most talented guy probably to ever step foot in an ECU quarterback room. And we agree on that, I I think. Um, But, yeah, I think you put all your eggs in one basket and that basket has a couple holes in it and doesn't work out. You go 2-10 and and uh, fourth drive of the season, Alex Flynn's in who has – we also were there. Um, Alex Flynn was totally fine with being the third-string quarterback, getting his master's and eventually getting his doctorate. Like, that was Flynn's – I've had conversations with Flynn. He was good with that. He never expected to be – He. I'm not going to say expected because Flynn is a competitor just like you. He works super, super hard. The Probably the smartest quarterback I've, I've ever been yeah. around. But if you asked him when I, uh, 2022, what do you think that you'll be playing fourth drive of the season or third drive of the season in front of 106,000 at Michigan, would he have said yes? He would have laughed in your face. And then he was, <laughs> and that's what happened. And I don't do. I think that was the right decision. No, and I'm not shitting on Coach Houston. I think Coach Houston's the right guy for the job. I mean, I love Coach Houston to death, and I'm very close with him. I might get on the staff one day and help coach. But like, was it the best decision to put all your eggs in Mason's basket and then kill his confidence by taking him out the third drive of the of the season? No, probably not. I mean, I if I was a quarterback coach, I would have been like, look, dude, this team's number one in the nation. Just go out. This is your first start. 
really first start. He started in front of no one in COVID um, when a false positive happened. Um, shout out California Jack. And then um, – I'm babe. <laughs> but, I mean, his first realistic start is in front of 106,000 versus number one team in the nation. If I'm the quarterback coach, I'd be like, look, dude, go out there, play loose. You can throw it a mile – Go throw it a mile. Throw it. Literally throw it. We're going to run a post route with Jazai and tell him to run as fast as you can and throw it as far as you possibly can. And just, if you connect, you connect. But we might lose anyways. So just go play free. This is your team. That's how I would have handled it. How would you have handled it? Well, one, one question I had for you before that is, for the, well, I'll hit the Michigan game first. Michigan game, yeah, you have a young quarterback first year starting. I would have the most basic game plan for him, make him feel comfortable. He's a rollout mobile quarterback. I'd roll him out some, probably ran him a little bit. Nothing too complex, but right, hey, throw those 50-50 balls up. You have some pretty good receivers. Throw the 50-50 balls up and just get loose with it. What happens, what happens. Pulling him out probably shattered his confidence. I'll be honest. You pull a quarterback out, that shatters their confidence. Anyone. And I don't think in a game like Michigan, the number one team in the nation coming in, you pull someone like that. But one question I had for you, is I remember your senior year, I was done playing football. You know, you guys got a lot of big time recruits in the portal. Uh, you know, the portal obviously changed from that year to this year. And we're at a, you know, time in college football now. You got to win now. You got to win now. Fans don't want to wait. ECU fans definitely don't want to wait. Do you think there was any mishap in the portal this year or maybe not getting the big guys? Because t- today's college football, you got to get the guys now yeah. if you have the gaps. I think that's a great question. I think that we weren't as aggressive to get guys that were difference makers now. I think we got guys. If you look at, if you compare the two, my senior year, 2022 and 2023's transfer classes, is my transfer class, the my senior year's transfer class, they went and got guys who had one to two years left that were NFL guys that were immediate impact guys that were going to come in, win, and get out. Mm-hmm. And if you look at this past year's transfer class, it was guys with three years left, four years left, that, hey, they're going to be great players, and some of them were great players this year. But I feel like we weren't as aggressive. We tried to build, instead of going to get high school kids with four years left, we got transfers with four years left. I think one thing that you guys haven't kind of mentioned, um, like when you're talking about Michigan and you want them to just sit back there and sling it 60 yards like you can, you got to have time to do that. Oh, 100%. And, I agree. And I think that needs to be a focal point moving forward this off season. You got to build up an O-line like we saw it in the national championship with Michigan. Like you have a dominant O-line. You got some dogs in the trenches. It's going to open up your whole playbook. You could run the ball and run the ball and then dump it off. Yeah. And How? So, I got Or you keep going. I got a question for you. I was just going to say, I just think that that should be a big focal point moving forward, which he's made it, uh, Coach Houston has made it like clear that it is. Yeah. But I think that is also something to look at from last year. And I think, Jack, um, a question for you is like going into the season. Jerome, I'm going to ask you the same thing about the receivers in the secondary. Is like going into the season, where did did you know that there was going to be a mishap in the offense? Did you know that the offensive line wasn't going to be ready to play? Not ready to play, but they weren't going to be as good as they should be. And same with quarterback and just offense in general. I knew that we lost some quality pieces uh, on our offense the year before. Um, and a lot of them came from up front. I mean, you look at Nishad, you look at Avery, you look at guys that just graduated, like Both Noah. Had a lot. Um, <laughs> but you look at guys that just graduated too, like Noah. Like you're missing some quality guys, so you go in the portal and you might get some hits and misses. And I think we got a couple misses. Um, I don't think we took as big of a as big of an emphasis on that as we should have. But um, I mean, personally, just being on the team, clearly like two and ten. Uh, at least for my last year, like obviously no one wants it that way. It's not the year anyone had it planned. It sucks. Uh, but I do trust Coach Houston a lot. I trust the the staff. I really do believe in the culture. Um, and I think that like moving forward, if they go get the right pieces, which so far they have, uh, I would like to see a little bit more on the in the trenches. But if they go get the more pieces, the right pieces, they could take it back to a bowl game for sure. My perspective for the year was a complete miss. A complete miss. So I think Houston will learn from it. Yes, I played for Coach Houston. I played for Coach Mo. It's a complete different coaching staff. He's, you know, a lot more gritty, a lot more, you know, tough talk. Like all the tough talk is true. But the thing was, he missed this past season. Completely missed. You know, like you mentioned, your your senior year, you guys got a lot of good portal re- recruits uh, out the portal. This year, uh, the the year past, I meant twenty twenty three season. You just didn't have those. You like you meant you had to develop. And I played with the quarterbacks that were here this year. Uh, great guys, great friends, but I could have told you, and I know it sounds a lot, you know, sounds easier to say from the armchair after the whole season. 
but there was a gap in the quarterback room and I was calling it out from the outside for a while and not getting a transfer in there was a complete mistake. And I would say we had a top 25 defense. What's sad about this is we had one of the best defenses in ECU history and it's washed. People won't remember it 15 years ago from now, 50, 20 years from now. They're going to remember 2-10, 2023 20, season, garbage offense, awful year. And I think the complete miss of the year was going out, creating some competition in the quarterback room. You called it out. We had a chance. Uh, he might have played at a school like uh, Rice. And, uh, you know, he, they beat us. So the biggest gap was not getting a quarterback this past year. But I, you know, what I love now, and we can get into it in a couple minutes, is they got their guy. They brought in a quarterback recruit with Kaden Hauser. And I, I'm happy they got some competition. There's potential another one coming yeah. to in a second. Um, yeah, I mean, I think – like you said, I think we just missed. I think I already said it, you put your all your eggs in one basket. And we're not saying that Mason wouldn't have been the guy if we brought a transfer in. But if you bring a transfer in, there's better competition. Be honest with you, like they wouldn't it was Mason's team. It was never mm-hmm. Flynn's team until Flynn was the starter in the season. The off season, like they gave every opportunity for Mason to be the guy. And if he wasn't gonna do it, then it would just fall on Flynn. It was never gonna be an equal opportunity and Flynn wins. If Flynn was playing they missed, and they knew that. And the conversation wasn't even like that until spring ball when Flynn started balling out. Yes, and Flynn did ball out. I am I love Flynn. He helped me a ton. Like, I'm telling you, he helped me a ton. He's a, a genius. Um, Drew, where do you think it went wrong, and uh, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, um, I think this is like – I feel like the first year that the transfer portal is like full strength, and I think ECU, like – this was just a real, like, learning curve for ECU. Like, Underestimated learn- it. Yeah, like, they really learned, like, how to treat the transfer portal and how important it is. And I think we also learned how much it can hurt you just as much as it can help you. Because I really feel like, probably not Avery because he left last season, but, like, they probably expected going into the year having Avery, Nashad, and those guys up front that would have made a big difference into the year. But, you know, like nothing's guaranteed anymore in college football, especially in the transfer portal. Like anybody can leave at practically any time. I mean, we just brought in a freshman, Antoine Jackson, and now he's gone after one season. And it's hard to blame him because NIL can change lives almost. So um, I think this was just a learning curve. Uh, Coach Houston obviously attacked the transfer portal much better this offseason, at least how it seems. So – I think we're in for a much better season, Caden, what do you obviously. got? I got a question for Drew and Jack. Obviously, they played on the team this past year. We didn't. You know, you were on one of the top defenses in the country. You guys stood out game out and game in. You guys competed with Tulane. If we had an offense that Tulane game, we definitely would have won. I have no doubt about that. But from a defensive player, when you're having so much success, you know, what was it like, you know, when you guys are balling out in the field, you're having big stops, you're making big plays, and the offense goes out there three and out. They go out there, turn the ball over. The, 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 how does that? How how is how are you guys handling like, that? You can't lie and say like it doesn't annoy you because like you get frustrated. But one thing about us is, and like I've said this before, and I I truly do mean it. Like we had a great team culture, and our locker room was pretty healthy considering the fact that we ended up going two and ten. Yeah, like in a lot of those situations, you're going to get guys fighting. You're going to get a lot of bad stuff happening in the locker room. We didn't have that. And so, like, specifically in my room where we had Jeremy Lewis, Chad Stevens, and I, we were just talking, like, control what you control. Like, we can't go we can't go play quarterback. We can't go do whatever they do. Control what you control. So, like, yeah, like, it did eventually put a wear on us. But, like, you still look at FAU, and that's, what, the second yeah. to last game, third to last game. Like, we were going out there. The defense was balling, having fun. And so it was like – Yes, it did take a toll, but at the end of the day, like, we were focused on how good could we be. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Jack. And, like, I think I know all four of us believe in Coach Houston's culture. Like, we believe in him. We're not sitting here saying we – I want to seem so negative and all that. We're just being completely honest with this past football season. But at the same time, we are very optimistic about this next football season because at the end of the day, we we are getting these pieces. Now, we're finally – we are being aggressive in the transfer portal. Um we obviously fired Donnie, and we bring in John David Baker, who looks the part. He's a young guy, energetic guy. Um, that was one thing that I wanted for when I talked to Coach Houston. Like, you just need a young guy. You need someone to bring energy. And look, I I love Donnie Kirkpatrick to death. Caden, you were in the room with him. 
we went through some dark days together, and I will always appreciate him and always defend him. He wasn't given the full pieces to be successful in certain times, and sometimes he was. It just didn't happen. And look, there's also – it's just football. Football sometimes just happens, and we talked about you miss on a couple of recruits, and you're just down in the dumps, and someone's got to take the blame for it, and he just happened to do it. But, um, I mean, I know – just on Donnie real quick, and we'll, we have tons of stories about it. It's like we had – I'll let you tell a story here in a second, actually, because I know what you're laughing about. <laughs> um, but Donnie Kirkpatrick, like, the nice – he didn't – I felt like he didn't deserve some of the stuff he was getting on social media. He deserved I, – do I think he deserved to be fired? If you go 2-10, and ten, your offense is that bad? Yeah, I think you do. And I think he'll agree with it, too. Like, it's not uh, – we're not sitting here saying he didn't deserve to be fired. But some of the stuff that he got, yeah, I didn't appreciate that because – there was a lot of dark days where I would wasn't playing well and they stuck with me and he stuck with me that in that quarterback room there was never a day where he wouldn't make me smile and I will appreciate that 100% every single day and he knows I've told him that straight. Um, Caden, th- let's just uh, tell the story yeah. about in practice one day. Get to every it. time we mention Donnie, Donnie was one of the funniest guys I think I've ever met in my life. Just genuine, genuinely funny and just like accidentally funny all at the same time. Like you said though, he cared about his players. I hate seeing that. Uh, you know, he gets all that grief he did. I mean, he deserved it because you had a bad offense, but like you hate it when you know the guy. Um, and it, it, as an ECU legend, he is. You know, hates that he goes out that way. But funniest Donnie memory, I think, <laughs> off the I'll, off the top of my head. We're gonna have to get a gag in here one time. Yeah, we'll tell it later. On. I know. So it, it was on scout team uh, defense versus first team offense, and scout team in college football, the, the scout team offense just wants to go out there and kick the defense's ass. And like bring it to them because that's what the defense needs. Scout yeah, 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 offense yeah. is a little different. Scout team defense, you want the offense to win. You want the offense to feel like they're basically playing the game and having success. So there's this one practice we were out there, and this defensive scout team player, I can't remember who it was off the top of my head, but he was just out there making plays. <laughs> <laughs> making plays and not letting this one play Donnie wanted to run happen. And Donnie was losing it. He kept looking at me and he's like, if he freaking keeps doing this, if he freaking keeps doing just, just You know how he used to get when he yeah. got chirpy? He's like, if he freaking keeps doing this. And uh, I kid you not, three times in a row, the DB made a play on the ball, broke the ball up, and he ran out there and Donnie has this little like tight run like, <laughs> like you'd see like an old lady on a speed walk shaking her butt. And he ran out this kid and he was like, if you do that one more time, I'm going to stick my size eight up your ass. <laughs> and we all paused and we looked at each other and we're like, size eight? He either has the world's tiniest foot for a man or he is packing. <laughs> and uh, we were just dying. He comes back and we were just geeking. Like the whole offense on the sideline, like me, the other quarterback signalers and the offensive backups were just dying. And we couldn't get the playoff. And he's like, What's so funny? What's so funny in his in his country accent? And uh, we told him, and he walked around the rest of the day with kind of a big head on his shoulders because <laughs> <laughs> he says, I have, a, I have a bigger shoe than an eight. <laughs> well, that's a fun Donnie story. I hope he doesn't uh, kill me for tough yeah. sharing that. I think uh, some of the funniest stories about coaches are when the laid-back coaches just blow up because yeah. you never expect it. Oh, 100%. And we'll get to more stories like that throughout these, uh, these shows because we got a ton of them. So uh, – I don't know if all of them will make them to the radio, so make sure that you tune into YouTube future Pirate, shows. yeah, future shows for sure, and then Pirate Radio TV on YouTube. Go to playlist, go to the Holt Naylor Show, or just look up the Holt Naylor Show on any of your podcast, and it'll pop right up. Holt, so talking about just football, previous season in college is wrapping up, or it's already wrapped up. NFL is wrapping up in the next couple of weeks. I'm hearing some news. I want an update on you. I on me? One. Yes, yeah. I guess I haven't done that yet. So. I, um, I have signed to go play in the UFL. So the XFL and the USFL have merged to create the UFL. Um, there will be eight teams. I have signed with the Arlington Renegades, the defending champion in the XFL. Um, I had offers to play in a couple teams. Um, had offers to go play in Canada, which were – it's actually a great thing. I might end up doing that later down the road. But um, eventually decided to sign with the Renegades – and um, I think it's a great opportunity for me. Look, I, I probably – I'm going to have to go compete and win the job, but, uh, you know, I've never been afraid to compete. So um, thank you for saying that because I wanted to kind of give an update. I probably should have done that earlier. But, yeah, so I leave for Arlington, Texas, right outside of Dallas on February 23rd. Camp starts the 25th. Um, the show will go on. All of this 
is going to continue. I will do it virtually. They will still be here. It'll look all the same pretty much. Um, I just won't be in this exact chair right here. So um, make sure to still tune in. We're still going to promote it and all that. It'll be kind of a cool thing because I'll do it during the season, during camp, all that. So I'll give you be able a to give hard you, knocks mix yeah, up. Yeah, little Holt Naylor's hard knocks. Yeah. <laughs> Who's, um, who's some players that are in Arlington? Yeah, so Garrett McGinn, um, he is going to be one of the linemen there. He played there, so he kind of helped um, recruit me there, per se. And then I am uh, I'm trying to get two of my ex-receivers there now for my senior year. Will, so, you, will uh, you say who? Or? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get CJ there, and I'm trying to get Zay there. So okay. there's talks in, uh, in getting them there. There's uh, CJ's technically with the D.C. defenders, but we might be able to – to finesse a couple things to get him there so uh ec west it sounds like yes that, that uh <laughs> that'd be pretty fun though i mean i think i talked to our gm and I was, he was asking because he's he was saw their tape he was watching my senior year and saw their tape and he was like are they available and i was like they just got cut from the niners a couple weeks ago right um obviously cj and zay are studs so if i got a chance to play with them again that'd be pretty sweet yeah i think zay had to try out with the falcons too he did in the last week yeah. i think yeah, yeah. he did Dang. so yeah, that's kind of that and then um, way, way to call that out. I, I appreciate that because I really needed to say that. And um, let's get back to ECU. I guess the next big thing: Donnie out, John David Baker in from Ole Miss. Um, young, energetic, seems that way. High tempo offense. Uh, Caden, you watch them a lot. A lot of RPO. Um, a lot of play action. Really run the ball well. You know that's something that a lot of high tempo offenses throw the ball a ton, which I, it seems like they will do as well. But they established the running game. Ole Miss had one of the best rushing attacks the last couple of years. Um, what are y'all thoughts on that? I'm excited. We get a young coach in here, kind of like you said. You know, we've Donnie was an older coach. Donnie was great uh, personality wise. But a lot of times, guys nowadays they want to feel like they can relate to your coach and like relate but have some respect at the same time. Uh, the younger coaches you see a lot of times have a lot of success with players just off relating, and that's a lot of things in life. You just want to relate to someone and feel like they get you. And uh, like you said, I watch a lot of Ole Miss football. I bet a lot of Ole Miss football. I love Lane Kiffin, the lane train. I'm all about it. And uh, when I saw this hire, I was pretty excited. You know, they have one of the most electric offenses. If you watch the Penn State game and the bowl game they had, it was just so fun to watch. They have the attack with the run. They have the pass. They have the RPOs. And they'll, they'll throw a mixed bag of trick plays at you. So I'm excited. So I'm hoping, you know, we get some QB reads. We get some RPOs. So we ha our quarterbacks can move. Our running backs attack. And then we just air it out on them. But uh, really excited about the hire. Cool fact about uh, John David Baker. He's been to seven straight bowl games. Uh, ECU fans, our number one goal, I always get read, is get to a damn bowl game. And he's been to seven straight. Let's make it eight straight and let's burn the damn boats. Let's go. Hey, you got me ready to go yeah. now. Jack, how do you feel about that? Really excited. Kind of like based off what you were saying. Uh, just at first, the whole movement, burn the boats, taking Twitter by or X by storm. Awesome. I love it. Wake up, see a burn the boats tweet. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what it's about. Today. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, one of the last things I said to Coach Houston, I mean, we've had like post football conversations and stuff. But one of the last things I said uh, after Donnie had gotten fired was just go find a guy that people want to play for. And that's the most important thing you could do. Like players are going to play 10 times harder when they got someone that they can relate to, like you said, and then eventually obviously go play for them. And so I've, I've mentioned this to you two uh, previously, but like that was another thing. I won't keep harping on it, but like Coach Dowse. And then at my other school, his name was Coach Sheffield. He's at Hawaii now. Um, and they were just guys like you wanted to play for. And at the end of the day, like one point, it might take you to get a little bit older in college football, but you're going to realize that these coaches are feeding their families based on your performance. So if you get a coach that you really want to play for and you're striving to be great for, you're going to do everything you can. And I think that that is a hire that the quarterback room will rally behind and really want to play for. A hundred percent. I played for some, you know, we played under coach Mo and you, we've seen a lot of coaches come in and out and we've seen a lot of players, the good, the bad, the ugly. And if you have a coach that can't relate or at least fire the players up, those players don't want to play for you and they will be disrespectful. They oh, yeah. know that your job's on the line. They don't give a, you know, dang sometimes <laughs> if you get fired or not. So the whole thing is, you know, get a coach. I agree with you 100%. Can they relate to the players? Drew, what are your thoughts on uh, on the offensive hire? At being a defensive back, a safety, you know, I know you've seen at least a little bit of this offense that they're bringing in. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? How do you think it's going to, you know, create mismatches on the defensive side of the ball? And, you know, what do you think he's bringing? Yeah, uh, I'm super excited about his tempo aspect that he's been talking about. Um, I actually got to talk to Parker Moore today, just walking to class, and uh, he says he's super excited excited um so if the o-line's about it then that's a great thing and working with lane kiffin for i think about four years i mean 
that's probably one of the best offensive minds in college football. So I know he definitely learned something there. And being in the SEC, like we talk about iron sharpens iron. There's no better iron than there. So I think he's poised to take the spot. He's a younger coach, and I think he's ready to burn the boats. I can't wait burn for the, the first uh, Lane Kiffin ECU tweet when we go off this year. Lane Kiffin's just tweeting oh, ECU. I, I, I love him. What I love about uh, John David Baker is, well, I did a little hometown fact. He's from San Angelo, Texas. Um, about the size of Greenville, 100,000 people. But cool fact I saw was eight Major League Baseball players came from San Angelo, which you think of a town like Greenville, eight Major League Baseball that's players. Kind of I don't. Lot, yeah. That's a lot, yeah. One big one uh, Holton was named after. Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox. Go. So we got to see if John David Baker can sling the fastball, sling the curveball, even throw the knuckle, or that'd be cool to see. Former quarterback, he, <laughs> he might be able to, yeah. Um, I think, so we all approve of that for sure. And then the next big, we talked about quarterback, 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 quarterback. Caden Hauser commits, um, is is on campus now. Saw him yesterday, got a chance to talk to him. Got a chance to talk to him on the recruiting visit. Um, great kid. You know, I haven't seen too much of his film, but obviously started some big games in Big Ten environments. Um, so I'm 100% for that. Has multiple years left. Um, isn't afraid to compete. You know, I got a chance to talk to him, and I literally told him, I looked him in his eye, and literally was just like, dude, this is I, what I said earlier. I said this isn't a two and ten program. This is a two and ten team, and they need a quarterback and an offensive coordinator to come in and compete for a conference championship. And if you're looking for a place that will take you in, kind of Jack, you're, he was from far away. He's from Cali too. Um, if you're from, if you're looking for a place that's going to take you in, where you can come in, you can win, you can become a legend here. And I thing that I told him was like two and ten to nine and three. Looks pretty dang good, and right. you would be a legend that way. And it's not a two and ten program; it's two and ten team. So they just need a few pieces on offense, and they're ready to roll. And that's what I told him. And I don't know if it helped him or not, but um, he literally told. I was sitting there with Big John too, and um, you know he said he wasn't afraid to compete. He wanted to get in the weight room and work out. So um, I'm all for it. You know, I'm going to stay in touch with him. Like I said, I talked to him yesterday when his classes started. Um, seems like a great kid. Um, and then. There's news coming out now. I guess we might go get another Rumors. kid. Yeah. Hold yeah. on. Uh, breaking news. Nick Saban is retiring. Oh. No way. Yeah, I thought I'd just throw that out there. What? Who? To, who per uh, Bleacher where Report. See? Wow. That's well, wild. Can you, can you, can you, <laughs> well, it won't be breaking. Well, yeah, we're, we're filming but... this. It's tomorrow. So, yeah, still. Yeah. We're, we're filming it on Wednesday. That, that's so. shocking, though. Wow, Drew. Thanks for that. Wow. <laughs> wow. That, that's why I brought you in to produce. He, I, well, <laughs> a little sidetrack real fast. Nick Saban this year, he looked rough. It, yeah. it, father time gets everyone. And that US USF game, he, they barely squeaked out their win. He looked old as hell. So, so bad uh, kind of Debbie. Don't mean to be the Debbie Downer here. My brother went to the University of Alabama, big Alabama fan. And he's saying that he heard a rumor over the weekend uh, from Alabama that his wife, Miss Terry, has early onset dementia. Oh my! God. And he'd be stepping down to take care. Well, of prayers to them, yeah. Jack well, the Debbie Downer. Yeah. It made me look uh, bad right there. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know. You didn't know. Prayers uh, for Miss Terry, just, but dang, that does suck. Yeah. yeah. Are, do they go get Dabo now? That's, that's no. You know who? Question. You know who I think they're gonna go get? Who? Or I hope so. Dan Lanning. That has, has be S- great. SEC experience. Has killed that at Oregon. All the recruiting, all that. I think he's he's a legend. He's smart in the mind. Maybe not legend yet, but yeah. he's super smart. Players want to play for him. He's energetic. He's a good recruiter. He's been in the SEC. Dabo played at Alabama, though. I, yeah. I understand that. Well, I don't you think, think Dabo's leaving Clemson. Do you think there's any possibility Pete Carroll might step in that spot or no? Pete Carroll's out today, too. That's yeah. Pete and uh, at the same day. Um, I, He's 72 years old. I heard of that yesterday and, and didn't want to expose him. Obviously, I mean, I have connections there. Um, I'm also hearing that he is going to still be in the organization. He's just mm-hmm. stepping away from head coaching, so no, I don't, I don't think they would go get an older guy. One more uh, kind of hit on this Dan Lanning idea is um, one of our previous coaches who came from Georgia and spent some time as a GA and assistant there. I asked him, uh, or I think he told me, he said, if you would have asked me who are two people in the college football world that I've been around that are going to be future legends, Dan Lanning's one of them. And he told me that. Oh, that's sick. So once he kind of said that, it kind of validated everything I was thinking. Yeah. And so I'd, I'd love to see that, but I guess we'll find out shortly. Yeah. Let's Dang. get back to Kate yeah. Bowser. Um, Kate. Thanks for the breaking news. That's actually pretty cool, Drew. Drew um, just came in, like, yeah. Yeah. threw us all off. Yeah. So we all approve of Kate Hauser. Um, he said he's not afraid to compete. Well, good, because he might have to compete, because there's rumors of Jake Garcia coming here. I heard of 
I go tweet it, which is a great follow if you not. I mean, he knows yeah. all that stuff. Um, on three reported it as well. And then, so er, I would give a little story. Earlier last week, I heard of the NIL deals that Kaden Hauser has. I'm not going to say any of that. It's not my business. But then while I was getting told that, they said, yeah, and then the second quarterback has and told me an NIL deals. And I'm like, what do you mean second quarterback? Is this going to Jeter? Like Cole Hodge? Who is this going to? Flynn? And now it's coming out that we're recruiting. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there's a great chance that this kid has already like been in deep talks, deeper talks than some people realize. If Which there's other connections that I'm not going to say that I know of why they were talking about him. But there's already a package in place to get him here too. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. I saw 24 seven today had the crystal ball report. hundred percent. He's coming to East Carolina. Let's go. So Let's I'm bring some competition. Back I just, just want to, I know I catch a lot of slander on here for being from California, but both these quarterbacks are from California. So I just like to put a bubble over <laughs> that might, for, for this podcast. We might be in some trouble then yeah. boys. <laughs> That's funny, but I'm excited about it's Kate. Football. It's not politics, bud. <laughs> I'm excited Local about, politics. I was, I was really excited about Kate and Hauser for a while. You know, we knew that was happening. You know, he played some big time football with Michigan State's issues last year with their coaching. You know, a lot of quarterbacks went in and out. So he played a lot of the year, played against Michigan, played against Washington, played against Ohio State, Penn State, a lot of big names. But one thing I kept, you know, talking with you and, you know, mentioning or, or thinking in my head, I was like, if we just keep Kaden Hauser, we're creating the same possibly, and I don't I don't think this, you know, his experience would be the same, but we're possibly creating the same scenario as last year. All putting our eggs in one basket. In one basket not creating competition. So I'm so happy to hear that, you know, Jake Garcia is likely coming to ECU to, when this airs, he might already be coming to ECU. So I'm excited for the competition. He was a huge recruit. Kane Hauser was a big recruit too. I think both four-star recruits yep. coming out of uh, high school. Uh, Jake Garcia though, offers from Bama, went to Miami, title town. Um, I'm excited. And I'm excited for this year for ECU. The coaches went out and just got some great talent, wide receivers, defense, and this is the year to do it. They they saw their mistakes last year in the transfer portal. We got to win now. And they went out and got it. And what's exciting about this year is if you're the best G5 school and you get that at-large bid in the college football playoffs, and I know I'm looking f- way out way, way out in the distance future, I know the first goal, goal is a bowl game here. I know it's a conference championship, which is so winnable. But you do those two things. You're in. You're in the top 12 spot for the college football playoffs. Good point, Caden. And you don't even got to go undefeated anymore. You win the conference, you're in with the American and the way that they are. There's 12 teams. I mean, I, I would imagine that a G5 has an at-large build, and the American's going to be probably the best unless you have another undefeated JMU team or something like that. Um, Drew, how do you feel about these quarterbacks? Uh, obviously, Caden's already here, and then possibly adding another with ACC, SEC experience. Yeah, uh, I think that's just another opportunity to – say iron sharpens iron i mean that's two guys that come from p5 schools and uh, i think this is the first year that east carolina doesn't even have a p5 team on the schedule for like a long time so i mean he's been going against competition that probably is way tougher than anything in the aac so i mean these guys they got a chance to come here and dominate the conference possibly win the conference in in the future but the first step it's a bowl game but I think these guys can get it done. Yeah. What's exciting here is this is a first season in a long time that we don't know who the starting quarterback is going to be. We we all thought it was Kate Hauser. Everyone was excited. But if we get Jake Garcia and he comes and it's official, like that's a true competition. Totally true competition. Two four-star former recruits. It'll be exciting to go in the spring following this quarterback battle, go into August, and then when it's finally named, I think, Pirate Nation. It just builds up the excitement after such a rough year last year. I agree. Jack, what do you got? I was just going to say, I think it's also interesting. I'm not 100% on this, but I don't think Jake Garcia has much, if any, experience in the game. He played a little bit in at, at Miami. Was, he, oh, at Miami. At Miami. He threw for, I think, like 700-something yards. Drew, if you could look that up. Um, but, Caden? Yeah, I just got to interrupt there. You're right. He doesn't have much experience. And but the, we're, we're not going to. No, I think that makes it so he yeah, has yeah. to prove himself. And I but, was thinking yeah. that's a positive. We weren't going to get a second guy with. who had that much status with that much experience at this time. But let me tell you this: I looked up Jake Garcia earlier today, and he's a father. And when you have your first kid, and my in sales or sports, we play with a lot of dads on our teams. When you become the father, I notice I'm not a father yet. Something changes about oh, you, 100%. and you get competitive. So. 
that father aspect of Jake Garcia scares me a little bit. I think he comes in fueled up. It's his third school. Right. He's going to prove give himself. A, yeah. prove himself I yep. hope so. I think that is as good as a second quarterback transfer that you could have gotten, in my opinion. Yeah. A huge talent guy that came in and – you know, played a little bit at Miami, didn't play in the SEC, but still been around some dudes. Missouri had a great year this year as well, 11-2. and two. Beat Eli Ohio Drinkwitz, State. who was at NC State, I know he's a great offensive mind. He recruited me at NC State now as a head coach there. So he's been around some great offensive minds. Um, so I think it's a good a good yeah. decision if we, can, uh, if we can get him. I'd be impressed by that. Drew, you got anything? Well, I, I haven't found the numbers yet, but I think it's impressive t- and this day and time to get a quarterback – to come to a school that's willing to openly compete like 100 percent, yeah that's like impressive you're not, you're not guaranteed a starting spot well no one is but i feel like Caton's coming in probably expecting to start but now like jake garcia is coming in knowing that Caton's coming in and is still willing to compete and fight for a spot that's commendable by him just by itself 100 percent. last thing drew spark sparked into my head just the competition you know what's good about following this is kind of like if we hear the rumors, who's winning the locker room? Yeah, who's the huge, who's the real leader here? That's exciting to learn as well because there's just so much new storylines coming into ECU that I'm excited about in the quarterback room. Yeah, I am too. We got anything else, Drew? You got it? Yeah. So, um, in 2022, talking uh, to the mic, so you can make sure. Oh, you're here. In uh, in 2022, he completed uh. 68 passes out of 114 for a 60% completion percentage for 803 yards with five touchdowns and four picks. As a true, was a true freshman? What uh, year was that? This was his sophomore year at, at Missouri. 2022. Okay, so that was at Missouri. Yeah. Okay, wow. So, I mean, he has experienced at least a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's our thoughts. You know, ECU football, I guess, past this past season, current season, we're excited about that. Um, next football coming up, you know, we're kind of done with college football. National, national championships done with. Um, Michigan wins it. Pirates actually held Michigan to less points than they did than in the national championship. So shout out to the Pirates defense. We're going to get too much into the national championship. Thank God. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's already over. Um, let's talk future football. Though. We got playoff football, um, wild card weekend coming up. Obviously one of the best weekends of the year. Bunch of games. We're going to dial into three of them. Um, Browns, Texans first. C.J. Stroud, probably the best rookie year of a quarterback or maybe rookie year in NFL history in general. Um, looks like a stud. Panthers trade up to get Bryce Young, trade away a lot of pieces, um, and then Strout goes to and sets the world on fire, flips his team during the playoffs. What are you guys thinking? I First, let me get to me. I As much as Strout is balling and all that, Tank Dell's hurt. Um, I think the Browns are a sleepy Super Bowl team. they got a really good defense, an experienced quarterback, a really experienced offense, and every couple years, there's a random quarterback that wins a Super Bowl on a, on the back of a good defense. And I think Joe Flacco, who has already done that literally in his last couple years, could do it again this year. I'm taking Browns versus Texans. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the Super Bowl is kind of chalked up in my head. I think it's going to be Ravens, 49ers. But the wild card, I'm excited for. You know, I really am excited to see Joe Flacco coming off the sofa in his home <laughs> at 38 years old and jumping into it mid season and looking like he's in prime form, maybe 27, 26 years old he looks form. Better. He, I know he looks amazing. And then you have CJ Stroud, you know, rookie year. I love this. I, I follow the memes on, uh, on X and the Stroud Boyd me Stroud Boyd memes. And it, I love it. And I just love how, you know, he's so humble about all of his success as well. And uh, so I'm excited for this game, the quarterback matchup. But I think you guys are right. I think the Browns are a sleepy Super Bowl team, one of the best defenses in the NFL. You're right. Stroud's missing some of his top targets. Um, but I, my heart wants me to go with Houston just because I love C.J. Stroud. I love his humbleness. I just love the way he approaches the game, how exciting he is. But I also love Joe Flacco, like just that old man story coming off the couch. I wish he's comeback player of the year. I don't think he will be, but I got the Browns too. I think the defense is just different there. I think the story is the vet versus the rookie. And uh, we'll Flacco see who pulls versus out. Ravens up. AFC championship would be kind of epic. That, that, that would be, be cool. Good. Jack, who do you got? Okay, can you switch up a little bit from I the previous switched, conversation? I switched up from the previous <laughs> conversation. I respect it. The game I started. <laughs> hey, some people got to admit no, when they're wrong. Yeah, for sure. Uh, plain and simple for me, I think the Browns defense is one of the best in the league. Flacco coming back. He looks great. Um, And then, like Caden was kind of mentioning right there, uh, Houston is missing Tank Dell. They're missing some pieces. 
I think the Browns defense is going to be be able to take care of that. I'm taking Flacco. Three Browns. Drew, what do you got? Yeah, I got Browns too. I think the defense is just too good. Um, the Texans have been too reliant on Nico Collins. I think they'll take him away. I think Texans will score, but just not enough. Yep, for sure. All right, we're going to cover two more games. Just be a little bit quicker on this one. Um, Dolphins, Chief, I think best game of the weekend, 100%. I think these are both legit Super Bowl contenders with legit MVP quarter, caliber quarterbacks. Great offensive minds. It's going to be fun to watch. Um, we'll go through you guys now. I'll tell you my opinion. Did you see the weather for the game? It was, snow, it was snowing. Snowing, there. high wind gusts in like the 30s or 40s. I, before I saw the weather, was going with Tua and Tyreek going back to Kansas City. But now seeing the weather, I'm going to go with Taylor Swift and uh, oh. Travis Kelsey. I can't wait to see one more week of her uh, videos. Actually, or is that? It was a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hold up. All right, Jack, who do you got? Uh, I'm taking Tua and Waddle. Revenge game for Nick Saban. Giving them like a, a final uh, see you later. In happy, the weather? Happy retirement. Tyreek's already been there. Played in that weather. I'm still going with the Dolphins. Drew. Man, them Florida boys is not ready for that weather. <laughs> as much as I want the Dolphins to win, it's too cold. They're not winning. All right. Cold all right. gate speed. I am actually taking the Dolphins. I think a lot of people, I bet the money's going towards the Chiefs now because of the snow, literally. I don't think it's that big of a factor. Um, I think rain is a bigger factor than snow. Obviously, they they play in Miami. Those dudes they all ain't from Miami, though. They're from all over. Um, Two is from Hawaii. Remember that. I understand that. But also, I mean, they're, the, I'm saying the whole roster isn't just from these schools. They've played in cold games before. A lot of them probably played in the Big Ten before. They're, they've played in snow games before. I'm taking the Dolphins in that one. Last thing there. I think the Dolphins are fraudulent low-key. They haven't really beat anyone this year. That's and what they're hearing right now. Yeah, they're. I think they're a little fraudulent. And I saw the best meme on X the other day was Tua sitting there and is surrounded by Bills guys, and he was just crapping his pants because, obviously, yeah. they blew the game. But I think they're fraudulent. All right, last game that we're going to talk about, Packers-Cowboys. Um, that's probably our fan base. We've probably got a lot of Cowboys fans and I've, I've, a lot of Packers fans too, um, I would feel like. But – I'm going to take in this one. I think Cowboys are just too good on defense. I think that um, they are legit Super Bowl contenders. While Jordan Love, this is your moment. This is your moment to to shine. You know, you got into the uh, – Drew playing the crickets there. Bear with him. But, uh, you know, this is, you know, Jordan Love's moment to kind of shine a little bit. You know, he got him into the playoffs beating the Bears in that rivalry. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if he goes and balls out and – plays good but i think the cowboys are too good i'm taking the cowboys yeah i think drew was telling you dude chill out the jordan love stuff but uh, <laughs> i think the cowboys are really good at home they're they've been really good at home this whole year i think the cowboys win don't cover seven and a half points in the nfl i think a lot of times especially playoffs it's gonna be i think green bay covers cowboys cowboys win jack packers are notorious or cowboys are notorious for choking I think it's going to happen, but not this week. I'm taking, uh, I'm taking the Cowboys to win, but the Packers to cover. I got you. Drew? Dallas has not even lost a home game all year. They're playing at home. The Packers, they're probably just happy to be there. <laughs> I'm going Dallas. <laughs> all right, well, that's our NFL picks of the week. Uh, so I think we got, Drew, we got the live call already? Yes, sir. All right, so we're going to get to this segment now. And this segment is brought to you by Anson Belts. Um, you want to talk about EC, you want to talk about recruiting and NIL and getting back to where we want to get back to. You got to invest in Team Boneyard. Anson Belt has invested into Team Boneyard and is continuing to invest in Team Boneyard. If you are an ECU fan, they also have some sick ECU belt buckles. Um, but these belts are sick. Let me get to some of the stats. That Jack, I'm going to let you say some stuff too. Um, obviously, they invest in Team Boneyard, invest in ECU. Micro adjustable holeless belts. That's the biggest thing about it is they're holeless. Um, if you if you get bigger, they'll work with you. If they get smaller, twelve months a year, yeah, uh, twelve months a year it'll work. We all get a little pudgy during the uh, during the off season, during the winter. We always get a little pale and pudgy, but those belts will always support you. Um, but they're sick. If you go to their website, AnsonBelt.com, they have over ten thousand combination of belts. We all wear them. Once you wear them, you will not switch up. Jack, what do you got? I was just gonna say the different designs. Uh, if you go to like the games, you'll see some ECU emblem ones. Yep, official you'll belt the, buckle. You'll see the Jolly Roger. Yeah, um, and it's I think it's like all with the NCA too, so it's all good. Um, but for sure, best belt, best belt buckle to wear to a tailgate. I think you got a pretty cool American flag one too. Oh, it's, it's um, so so many options. For sure, go check them out. We as former players for sure appreciate their support to Team Boneyard. So all I can say is thank you to them and and go support them. 
Got one on right now. Hold this. Love it. Hold this. Let's go. All right, so we got a live caller now in, too. So fifth quarter call-in show, obviously, is a huge thing for our partner, Pirate Radio, and we wanted to do something like that to let the fans call in, ask us questions. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, I think we got Zach on the line. He replied to one of our tweets, at Holt Ehlers Show is how you do that. You tweet at us, and we will get you on this show. We promise you that. Zach, can you hear us? You know, yeah, hey, guys. What's going on? What's up, man? Thanks for joining us, obviously. Um, first episode, we're excited to have you. Um should we do Holt Tuttle first, or should we yeah, let him ask questions? I would do Holt Tuttle first. Right, kind of introduce it to him. Yeah, so Zach, I'm going to introduce you to Holt Tuttle and kind of explain it, explain what we're going to do here. I'm going to give you a chance to win an Anson Belt buckle from our sponsors. We're going to send it to you if you get it right. If you're wrong, we still might look out for you a little bit, but we'll, we'll have to see. Um, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're putting you on the spot now. So here's how it's going to go. Um, I'm going to say a play that I've ran throughout my career. Um, whether college, NFL, even high school, uh, some of these all-star games. But I'm going to say a play like I'm an offensive coordinator, and you're going to have to repeat it like you're a quarterback in a huddle. So if, if so, I would say a play to you, and then you are in the huddle, and you have one chance. We might give you two chances um, to say the play correct like you're in the huddle. If you get it correct, you get an ants and belt. If you get it wrong, no ants and belt package. You How get to ask that? your questions, though. Yeah, yeah. and then you, we'll, still, we'll still give you a chance to ask questions. All right, you ready? All right, Do you understand back. what's going on? Yeah, I think I got it. All right, here we go. I'm the offense coordinator here. X short to crib pack right, jacks right, X jam swirls alert 58. Absolutely not. All right, I'm going I'm <laughs> to go slower. Go a little slower for him. That was tough. That was I'll brutal. Go, I'll go a little bit slower. We got the one-minute uh, ticker up there, Drew. I, I restarted it. All right, here we go. X short to crib pack right, jacks right, X jam swirls alert 58. I got X short to crib jack right, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad hey yeah uh all right well let's give uh let's give caden a shot at this i'm gonna say it quick though uh all right you typed it in <laughs> caden's out caden's disqualified <laughs> jack, <laughs> jack did you type this in this is supposed to be all right I no dude, we're not doing it with those guys all right zach get to your questions we might still send you some belts just because caden and jack uh i was gonna if they got it right i was gonna send you one but the they cheated. Gate. <laughs> uh zach zach yeah. what do you got for us well, I mean, I, I definitely want to know what that play was so that whenever yeah. I see it this year, I can be like, oh, man, that's X short to Crip Jack, right? <laughs> <laughs> you almost got it again. Yeah, yeah, in fact, yeah, let me get to it real quick. So X short is a motion. Crib pack right is the formation. Jack's right is the protection, six-man protection. X jam swirls. X jam is a route by the X. It's a kind of stutter up the middle. Swirls is like two corner routes and then curls. And then alert 58, you would alert it versus cover zero. If you saw it, you would just say alert, alert, and it would just change the protection to seven-man protection. It would keep that tight end in. So that's uh, – Of course. Kind I don't of know who there. doesn't know that. It's, had you asked me it's to a pass play. play. Yeah, it's a pass play. There you go. Play, I would have been able to do that, but you have to <laughs> I, I think the big – Caden here, Zach, I think the biggest call out there for fans like you guys and just fans listening is – Hearing that, like it, and like Holton, you can say I don't have any experience, but hearing the play, uh, like in a huddle, uh, your coach will say it to you really fast, or hearing it through a headset, you hear it so fast, and you got to react immediately and know exactly what they're talking about. So 100%. It's, it's really hard to get get used to. Now, so you can see my Seattle helmet here, but um, in the NFL, you think that these mics, it's a billion dollar company, and these mics that you know the helmet mics that quarterbacks have, you know, right. it's all clear and stuff. I'll, this is how it sounds. I'll give you exact. This is how you would get it in. X short, quick pack right, jacks right, X jam swirls are like 58. And Mike cuts out. And I'm like, you know, like, Pat McAfee up. does the whole kicking thing on college game day. I think that that's what they ought to do next year is just yeah. see, you know, <laughs> see if someone can say it. Kids up there kicking footballs. They oh, they do. They do. <laughs> Anyone can do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sure. All right, but, Zach, you got any questions for us? Yeah, man. Um, so, you know, born and raised the East Carolina fan. Um, you know, I've had generations of my family go. Uh, met my wife, not at East Carolina, but, you know, she's she went to East Carolina as well. So it holds a, uh, a special place in our heart. You know, being uh, from Eastern North Carolina, you kind of get overlooked. So appreciate what you guys do and the ambassadors that you I are for, uh, for the college. But, um, you know, so I'm, I'm going to hit you out the gate with a tough one, but then I got a softball question. Um, and each, each question is a multi-part one, but, um, okay. so, uh, each, of, each of the three of you, you know, through various parts of your career, uh, had to commit to my, uh, Mike Houston, you know, Holton and, uh, and Caden, y'all were there. 
um, you know, whenever that, that turnover was made. Uh, and then, Jack, you know, you were a transfer. What was it about Coach Houston that really just sold you on staying there and, you know, playing for him and, in Jack's case, wanting to come and play for him? Uh, you know, what made it so special about either Coach Houston or, uh, or Greenville? And then also uh, one of the things – being a head coach, um, you know, you have to maintain the locker room and, and keeping, keeping your heads up. And it was amazing sitting in the stands and seeing the difference in this year's 2-10 and 10 team and how they seem to be more cohesive and stayed together throughout all 12 games, whereas last year, uh, you know, it seemed to be, you know, some speed bumps hit down the stretch. So I'd like to know kind of what those speed bumps were, you know, what do you think that attributed to? or attributed to that, I guess. And then, uh, you know, it's kind of your feedback on, on the other stuff. He's like, that's a great question. Holy cow. I'm going to let Jack touch on that part. But first, let me get committing to Coach Houston. To be completely honest with you, Caden Will, too, those first, that first, I guess, winter conditioning with Coach Houston, 100% honest, honest, was completely ass. It was terrible. Um, I remember doing the perfect 30s, Caden. You can hit on mm -hmm. this, too. Is like he came in and – but that's what we needed. We needed a complete culture shift, and we needed something with, that not many people would accept. And the guys, literally Coach Houston's program was built on, when he comes into a program, it's built on whoever lasts two years from now will be a successful person, not just on the football field, but in life. And once you realize that, and once I realized that, and that he wanted to win and he knew how to win, he'd done this before, that's when I bought in. But yeah, those first that first two semesters, man, it was tough. Even those first seasons were tough because we weren't that good. and But he had a vision. I had a lot of long talks with him, a lot of dark, dark talks with him where I was going through dark times just from losing. But at the same time, he was too. He wasn't used to it. So I think for me, it was seeing the same vision that I viewed ECU football down the road was the same vision he had. Whether we agreed on the same way to get there was totally different. I knew he was a defensive guy coming in, and that was hard at first. But – we still had the same end goal in, in mind, and we both connected on that. And now he's, you know, I have a great relationship with him. Never had a bad relationship with him, but there was a time where it's like, should I transfer out? We got a new coach. He didn't recruit me and all that. Or should I stay, buy into this guy? And I eventually bought in, and everything worked out great. And I'm, I'm definitely glad I stayed. And I'm fully supportive of, of him and think he's the guy for the job. But great question, Caden. What do you think? Yeah, it's a great question as well. Uh, I actually met my future wife at ECU as well at Pantana Bob's. I don't know where you, <laughs> I don't know where you met your wife at, but uh, Pantana Bob's is where I found love in a hopeless place. Um, <laughs> I didn't meet mine until till we were both living in Raleigh. But go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Thought that was a good call out. Um, no, my my story is a little different. As a walk on, um, I had a really good relationship, and I had to build my way here under the last staff. So under Scotty Montgomery is where I really came in and I worked hard. I worked my tail off. I earned a lot of respect from the coaches. I learned the entire playbook. I worked harder than any other quarterback, I think. And Holton, you can be mad at me if I say this. I think I was the hardest working quarterback in the off season. And I learned earned a lot of respect. Uh, me and Coach uh, Mo had a really strong relationship. Me and Coach Peterson, the last offense coordinator, had a strong relationship. And, you know, there was rumors floating that they might have put me on scholarship pretty soon. And, you know, I don't know. That never happened. So there was when, new for a fact. Yeah. So when that come, when that changes and for a guy like me, it was devastating. It was completely devastating. I knew like in the back of the mind, ECU was happy. They got rid of Scotty Montgomery. But for a guy in my situation, it was completely devastating. Holden can tell you that. I, it was a hard time for me. But what I, what I wanted to do is, you know what? I got to come make start over again. And I love ECU at that point is my going into my junior year and I loved ECU. So I just stick it out and I didn't have any options. It wasn't like the transfer portal is what it was today. Like I wasn't going nowhere. I was paying my way. So I had to stick it out and I really bought into this culture shift, you know, the toughness, the grittiness. Cause that's what I, that's what I am. I was tough and I was gritty. And uh, so I think I really fell into that was the toughness of it and uh, really changing the program. I wanted to be a part of something special. And eventually I wasn't because I moved on and uh, I didn't want to pay for five years of school when I didn't have to pay for five years of school. But I bought into the fact of changing the program, making a bowl game. And, you know, eventually it happened. I didn't experience it, but that's kind of what I bought into. Before we get to Jack, can you, I still think even though you weren't part of those bowl teams, you're still part of it because you were part of the initial shift of buying into the process, buying into his culture. So 
uh, you were still a part of it. I just wanted to hit on that. Jack, the recruiting, I guess, talk about getting recruited by him more, I think, is uh, would be kind of what Zach wanted to see here. Yeah, hey, Zach, this is Jack. Um, so my recruiting, like I've, I've mentioned earlier in the show, uh, it was a very fast-paced recruiting. And it, was, it was near the end of the, the winter break cycle. So um, that was at the time where ECU just – finished up their bowl game in D.C. that they did not get to play in, um, and everyone was kind of back home on vacations and stuff. And so when I came out to campus, it was literally probably three or four days before that spring semester started, and I was already amazed by everything I had seen, but um, just kind of what Kane said, like when he sold me on the toughness, uh, the hard-nosed, the fact that I was going to come in and just have a fair opportunity to compete because like I wasn't looking for a handout. I wasn't looking for – coming in and being placed at the bottom of the depth chart. But he was like, we're going to evaluate you and you're going to have a fair chance to compete. That meant a lot to me. But to me personally, nothing meant more um, than when he looked at my parents' eyes in his office and was like, I will take care of your son. Like, I understand that you guys are in California. Uh, it's it's pretty far for you guys. You might not be able to make it to every single thing that other parents can, but I could promise you, like, I will take care of him. I will care for him more than just a football player. And now – however many months we are out of the season, um, I can assure you that he's a man of his word, him and his coaching staff, uh, whether it's helping me find a job, just being like a mentor or a friend to me, um, they are certainly doing that. So that was pretty important to me. You know, I, I fly back that night after my one day visit, um, school starts in two days. They're kind of wondering what, what an answer is. And that time change, it, it's different, obviously. So I landed at like, I don't know. I think it was like 1 a.m. in Sacramento, <laughs> and that's 4 a.m. here. I go to sleep. I don't set an alarm. I have nothing to do the next day. I wake up, and it's like probably like 10 o'clock in California, and I got a text at like 4 a.m. from Coach Houston. Did you make it home safe? And oh, so that's like, cool. So stuff like that meant a lot to me. Um, that's the I stuff was, you don't hear about. That's awesome. Right, yeah. and so I I wasn't um, – I mean, I was pretty realistic with myself. I knew if I wanted to have a shot in the NFL, I had to do some crazy things. And so I was looking for a coaching staff that was going to help me attain my master's, which I'm in my last semester for right now, and help me find a job and, and become a better man. And so those were things that caught my eye. Um, and then along with that, like they were talking about, like changing the culture. And, and I kind of got the back end of Caden, what Caden was talking about. My first year we go win a bowl game, had a great year, met great friends. So all of that really sold me right there. Great question, Zach. We'll give you uh, one more, and then we're going to get on to the next segment. What do you got for us? Yeah, so I uh, appreciate that, guys. Um, kind of a, a good and bad thing. Uh, so as players, you know, uh, we know that Greenville special, ECU, is, is top-notch. Um, what are places that you really kind of circled on the schedule, uh, looking forward to go play, places that you hated? Uh, coaches <laughs> that you just absolutely wanted to punch in the face and coaches where you're like, you know what, if I wasn't playing, playing here – uh, you know, I'd go play for that guy. And then also, you know, same with players. Like, you know, who would you – if you didn't get penalized or anything, like you just deck them in the face. <laughs> it, who would it be? You do um, get penalized. I learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. But uh, And then players that, you know, you really respect. It's like, man, I'd love, I'd love to suit up with that guy. Yeah, I think – man, you're coming with some heat today, man. Uh, great first <laughs> guess. Um, I think – for me, going to my senior year, I remember I was really looking forward to going to BYU because I'd never really been out west before. Um, obviously, they have a really cool environment, really cool setting. It Everything that people say about it is true. I think everyone should go to a game there. I mean, I will plan on going to a game there eventually too. But um, I think BYU was the place in conference. Night games at Cincinnati were always fun. Uh, we did that my senior year as well. We, we really should have pulled it off. Those were always fun. UCF was always fun in the bounce house. Um, unfortunately those teams are out of the conference now, but that's kind of what I looked forward to. And coaching wise, um, I loved coach Mo. There was a, there was a point where I almost transferred to Maryland for coach Mo, um, when he left and he was the OC and quarterback coach there. So, um, just cause he recruited me, he was very, very smart. Um, you know, offensively, he was a very smart offensive mind and coaches outside of that. Um, like any other teams, I don't really Dabo, I think, would be a cool cool coach to play for. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, players, I'm not going to call out any bad players. I'll let the defensive guys do that. But, Caden, what do you think? Yeah, favorite places I, I, I love to go to was I love Tulane. Uh, we went to Tulane when Mo Bamba first came out, and it was a <laughs> packed game. And that was, like, one of the most ele- – Tulane's like a little soccer stadium. Tulane like, was packed? Oh, yeah, 2018. Yeah, yeah, 2018. Yeah, yeah. It was packed. It was like a little MLS stadium. It made me feel like one of those small European stadiums. And – 
I, I enjoyed Tulane. Cincinnati night games, so I'll second that, second to none. Um, places I didn't like. Um, I'd say Tulane. I Tulane's like locker room was garbage. Uh, Navy. Navy was cool, but the, the, the locker room there was bad. Really tight, old school. Navy's probably one of the coolest places to play. Environment. Yeah. Locker room-wise, just complete. No way. And then coaches that I really loved, I'll second that to Holton. Coach Mo, uh, you know, I came in as a walk-on. And me and him developed such a great relationship. Uh, you know, outside of this, I love politics, uh, just following that. And me and him would get into serious conversations about life and just did disagree, agree, disagree, agree. And we formed a bond as a player and a coach that as a walk on. I never thought I would develop with a coach. And, what, you know, Coach Mo gets a lot of hate here at ECU. I bet ECU fans, you know, the majority of them, you know, can't stand him. But as a man, that was one of the most awesome man i've ever met my entire life he really yeah. cared about his players uh maybe not the best coach but he cared about you as a person and that's one thing i always respect and then i'll second that with uh both of my quarterback coaches coach peterson and donnie kirkpatrick i think the same way Great guys. Uh, same way um coaches outside of ecu that i really respect was probably luke fickle at cincinnati so i grew up an ohio state fan my parents were from ohio and uh Six and six year that Ohio State went six and six and they fired Jim Trussell. I took a picture with Luke Fickle that year. So I was we were at Cincinnati night game and I just walked up to him and walked in. I was like, Oh my god, I took a picture with you when I was like ten years old or whenever however old I was. And he was like, Yeah, I don't clearly don't remember that, but he was like, uh, you know, super nice to meet you and uh just something like that, you know, someone just giving you a little bit of attention and you're just recognizing you and he thought it was cool too. And, you know, that that goes a long ways. Yeah. I'm going to mix it up with you a little bit. Um, you know, I've, a lot of people, some some can't say this, but I was lucky enough to play in two different conferences on two different sides of the country. Um, so I'll give you some a couple different answers. Uh, first off, playing over here, though, Cincinnati at night was one of my favorite games from that year for sure. But moving over west, uh, one of the coolest stadiums I could say I've played in was when we went to Hawaii before it got torn down and it was where oh, the Pro yeah. Bowls were all played. Um, I can't put my finger on the name of it. It's in Hawaii. That's all that matters. Oh, yeah, <laughs> stadium, wasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, Aloha Hall Stadium in Honolulu. And so we played Hawaii there, and that was a pretty cool experience just because you know all the legends that were in that same locker room as me. And so that was a pretty cool experience. Um, one that is overrated, and I'll tell you straight up, is Boise State, like the blue turf. Um, it was all cool to play on in NCAA 14 when we were little. <laughs> but going out there and playing, like the turf was pretty bad. Um, I guess the stadium like was, was pretty cool as a – above average but i mean that's down on my list um as far as coaches go my previous coach at nevada jay norvell who's at colorado straight colorado state also a great guy uh blue collar gritty coach um and he rewarded me for my hard work gave me a scholarship and i'll forever be indebted to him for that one um and then another good coach was pete carroll my dad was a swimmer at usc so we were raised trojan kids um and i'll never forget We'd go to a couple games a year, and at one of them, we like went to the campus on a Friday night when they were doing their walkthrough before they went to the hotel, and like they were loading up the team buses. And one of our family friends from our area actually went on to play there, and so we were saying hi to him and stuff. And Pete walked up, introduced himself, and like let us go on the bus with the team to the hotel. And oh, that's it. I was like six years old or something like that, and never you forget, don't forget that. that. Yeah, that was when USC was at their peak too with Reggie Bush and all that. So. That's for sure one of the coolest moments for me. Heck yeah. Hey, great question, Zach, man. We appreciate you joining the show. Um, we will still get you an Anson Belt package. Uh, just DM the whole Ayler show or whole Ayler show on X, and we will figure all that out and get you uh, get you there. But appreciate you, man. Hey, appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Thanks, Zach. Zach. Thanks for having me. Bye. Zach's lucky. First guest gets a first package, regardless know, of winning and losing. He deserves it for the great questions. <laughs> yeah, he, he had great it. questions. He had great questions. Um, we're going to get this next segment, but this next segment is brought to you by Worth Chiropractic, one of the best um, businesses here in town. Definitely have helped me out along the way, but they have, it's your local choice for chiropractic care, automobile accident. They'll specialize in treating automobile, automobile accidents, slips and falls while working closely with your attorney. Everyday back and neck pains or sports related injuries, they offer safe, natural care to get you back to being you. No drugs or surgery, so it's convenient, comfortable, and cost effective. And the first console is free. Worth Chiropractic, two convenient locations on Arlington Boulevard. 1-800-BACK-DOC today. Worth 
helped me a lot in my career. I promise you to keep me on that field. Because yep. there was times I've had back problems, if you don't know. Um, <laughs> Pause. No. <laughs> Georgia State, I really messed up my back in 2020, I think is when that was, and he kept me on the field constantly. I mean, I was there at least once a week he was working on me. So, appreciate Worth Chiropractic for the sponsorship. And let's get through this next segment. It's going to be our best bets of the week. Um, How we're going to do that is we're each going to have – or I might not have two bets each week because I'm not going to talk about NFL bets um, because if you're in the NFL or trying to get back into the NFL, you're not allowed to talk about it. So I'm going to let them do that. But I'm going to talk about any other sports that I like. And I will get to that now. We're going to keep a score or a record of our bets. And you guys are going to decide what the loser of the month with the worst records punishment is going to be to an extent. We're not going to go too crazy. But if you guys got some cool ideas, um, hit us on X with them and we'll make it happen. But y'all get to yours and then I'll go last. Caden, what do you got? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the NFL this week. Um I love college football betting. I'm so sad it's over. That's my what I get into the most. Um, and I love college basketball, but college basketball lines, they come out like the night before, so it's kind of tough. But I really like the Eagles minus three here against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, uh, what, they put up nine points against the Panthers. Uh, barely squeaked into the playoffs. Very weak um, NFC South. Uh, so I really think the Eagles, I know they went one, one and five in the last what is it? Six games. Uh, Drew is itching. Up. I know. Drew, Drew is like <laughs> he's fading. You want? I know. I, yeah, he can. But I think you know Jalen Hurts and the team that come together, and this is the playoffs. This is what they played for all year. These guys are just great. Uh, they're a great team, and I, I their coach. I can't remember his name. Sirianni. Yeah, Sirianni. Niners I, broke him. Um, I I think he's going to get the team right, and I think three points is easy to cover. If if it doesn't cover, it's a push. And guess what? Pushes are wins. Uh, because you don't lose your money. Uh, but outside of NFL, I kind of like college basketball. There's a couple games I'm looking at this uh, Saturday. I really like the San Diego State versus uh, who are they playing? New Mexico. Uh, they're playing New Mexico. Are you? Uh, uh, do you really know this bet? You don't even know who they're. I do. I, well, because I have San Diego State. San Diego State okay. basketball is electric. They're fun to watch. Caden, don't tell me they're playing in New Mexico though. They are playing in New That's Mexico. A very hostile environment. Mountain West, I'm telling you, I've done my research. I know. What I love about this, the pit. listen, what I love about college basketball is when you get the favorite at the, um, you know, the way, as a way team, you know, they, the line gets really small or they become plus money. And if San Diego State's plus money here or it's a minus two or it's a minus three, I'm hammering it. I've watched them all year. They're fun. They've played some good basketball teams. New Mexico is also 13 and two. They're both 13 and two, but like, they haven't played anyone all year. Right. And San Diego State's played Gonzaga. They played Cal. They played Washington. They played played basically Pac-12 schedule this year. Um, so those are my two best plays. I like it. We'll have to keep record of it. Jack, what do you got? First bet we already talked about tonight. Uh, I'm going Browns minus two and a half. I just, for the same reason I said before, I like Flacco and I really do love their defense. I think they're great. C.J. Stroud is missing a crucial piece in Tank Dell. And for that reason, I'm taking Browns minus I like two and it. a half. My next bet is going to be Lions minus three. I like Dan Campbell, and I love their mentality. <laughs> I don't know what you were going to say there. No, if you actually watch their post-game speech when they made the playoffs, though, Dan Campbell brought up all the vets that have been in that organization for quite a while, and like they was, it was, it was awesome. crying. Yeah, like it, they've worked so hard to turn that around, and Dan Campbell has. So I'm doing that. Um, also, it's the quarterback. We got Goff or Stafford coming back to their original teams. So I think Goff has something to prove. He's kind of been written off a little bit. Um, the Rams have been heating up, but I'm taking Dan Campbell and the Venti boys minus three. I like that. What's yeah. fun about that is what front office got the most out of their investment. Yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right, Drew, you do you have some player props for us? Nah, not today. <laughs> uh, before we get to that, Drew, I say that because Drew literally always – Always, always talks about player props. So, Drew, we're kind of sad you don't got player props. We're going to have to bring the heat next week. I just feel really confident about it. All right, what let's hear I what got. you got. All right, so obviously, y'all probably know I'm taking Tampa plus three. <laughs> <laughs> like, this man, Baker, he's not playing around. Zin's in his pocket mid practice. I do love that. I didn't see that. I'll have to check Philly it out. Philly one and five in their last six games got blown out by the Giants week 18. they not ready. They coming to Tampa. Oh, my goodness. It, it might get bad. I don't know. And <laughs> and then uh, my second game, I'm I'm going with Jack. Uh, Cleveland minus two and a half. Uh, I think 
without Tank Dell, I think Cleveland's just a better team. Uh, Flacco, he's playing like he got some. Flacco. Through. So I think Cleveland wins that game pretty. Flacco. Easy. He called him Flacco. 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 I like that. Joe Flacco. Tomato. Tomato. Hey. <laughs> I like Zen Mayfield though. Now you said it. I forgot about the Zen thing. I might have to hop on Zen Mayfield. <laughs> yeah, but Drew, man, uh, great addition. Hopefully you've done good producing, man, because that was awesome. I appreciate it. My, okay, you can go ahead. No, I was wait. I was, uh, my one bet. I'm only gonna have one. Or I have two, I guess. Um, I'm a huge Knicks fan. If you can see my hat right here, I if I can pick the Knicks to win the NBA championship. I, they're going to the NBA championship. Just like I love the Pirates, I love the Knicks. Um, they just traded their young core, which I'm very not excited about. But they've went, they've won since. They blew out the Sixers last week. They have the Mavs Thursday night. Um, I'm going to take Moneyline Knicks. The line isn't out yet. I'm taking Moneyline Knicks. They have the same record. Um, 8.30 tip-off versus the Mavs. I'm taking Moneyline. The Knicks are on a roll right now. Since trading, their 2-0. and I'm going to take them going 3-0 and versus Luke and the Mavs. And then my second pick... In American Conference, Florida Atlantic, obviously one of the powerhouse basketball schools in this conference, a newcomer versus Tulane. Florida Atlantic 11 and 3, Tulane 10 and 4. I think the line, it's at Tulane. I think the line is going to be 9.5 to 12. I would take Florida Atlantic um, with that line if it's around that. It is there. I think Florida Atlantic, they've lost two out of the last five. But so has Tulane and Florida Atlantic. I think it just has too much talent. They made a huge run last year in the NCAA championship. I believe made it to the championship. And I think losing these last couple games to some bad teams uh, has them motivated. I think you'll get better value. Tulane's a pretty good basketball team. They've lost a few uh, recent ones, but I think you'll get uh, minus three to six on cool. FAU. I would hammer that then yeah. if you get it. Uh, boys, that was fun. Episode yeah. one. Make sure you tune in next week. Harold Varner coming on. Um he will be not live, but his face will be on the screen just like he is here. Um, excited to have him. We're going to continue to get huge guests. We appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Pirate Radio TV. Go to Playlist. The Holt Naylor Show is right there. Any of your podcasts, if you just want to listen, just look up The Holt Naylor Show on any of those, and they will be there. Also airing Thursday nights at 6 p.m. on Pirate Radio, and then Friday nights at 6 p.m. on Pirate Radio too. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, We thank you to our sponsors, Anson Belt and Worth Chiropractic, and we will see you next Thursday.